Hi folks, today I'm going to be talking about a comet that will be making a very close pass to Mars next year and might even collide with the planet. Uh, I'm talking about Comet C2013A1 Sighting Spring. Now that designation means it's a long period comet and that it was the first one discovered this year. And what we know so far is that on October 19th, 2014, it will be making either a very close pass to the planet or it will actually collide with it. Uh, when this particular article was published about a week ago, uh, JPL's website showed that the nominal orbit had a close approach distance of 0 .0007 astronomical units. Now, if you go onto their website right now, what you'll see is that the nominal orbital distance uh, from Mars has actually been cut in half at 0 .00035 astronomical units and change. And the minimum, minimum distance is still reading zero, so a collision is still entirely possible. Now, it's not likely, but it is possible. And so what I've done is um, generated a series of Monte Carlo solutions of the orbit uh, in order to determine the orbital uncertainty and display it. Now, this time I had some unique challenges because we're dealing with an object with a very high eccentricity. In fact, right now the oscillating orbital elements are such that the eccentricity is greater than one. And what that means for me is that FindOrb, the program I normally use to compute the orbit of uh, objects like comets and asteroids, isn't able to generate a file that ORSA can automatically parse and uh, load into its uh, simulation. So as a result, I had to manually enter the state vectors for each of the Monte Carlo solutions, which limited me to a lower n number of uh, Monte Carlo solutions than I would normally use. Uh, thus, the simulation isn't quite as populated. It's more sparse. But we can still get an idea of what the uncertainty region looks like and see that Mars is embedded within that uncertainty region. So. This simulation starts on October 19th, uh, 2014, at midnight universal time. I've got it fast forwarded here to the point where Mars starts to encounter uh, the uncertainty region of this comet. Each of the blue dots you see represents a potential position of the comet. And of course, if I were to do more Monte Carlo solutions and load them into the simulation, this whole area would get filled in with blue dots. It's a little sparse here, as I said, because I had to manually enter the state vectors for each of these objects. Uh, but you can see where the region is located and that Mars is deeply embedded, almost right in the center of that region. Uh, that means there's a decent chance of impact. We're not talking about a very high chance. We've got almost 150 objects here and not a single one of them actually hits Mars, but some of them do pass very, very close. Uh, the first one that does so is number 41. You see it right here. And if I uh, fast forward it there a little bit, okay, you can see it passes right by the planet. That distance is about 2,000 kilometers from the surface. And then if, uh, a few minutes later, number seven comes along and passes by on the other side at almost the same distance. So if I were to continue doing additional Monte Carlo solutions and fill this in, you would be seeing impacts on the surface. And it could be impacts that are close to number 41 right here on the day side of the planet, or it could be impacts close to number seven over here on the southern and night side of the planet. It just depends. Uh, both sides are, are possible. We simply don't know at this point. And most likely it will be somewhere else uh, missing the planet, but still making a very close pass. Now to show you what this looks like from Earth's perspective, I will change the mode here. Put our virtual telescope at Earth. Rotate it to be looking at Mars. Actually, I should be rotating it to Earth's rotation. There we go. Now we're looking at Mars from the perspective of Earth. And of course, this is a two-dimensional view. So when you see, say, number 90 passing close to the planet, it's not actually nearly as close as what we just saw with uh, number 41 and number 7. Those are the uh, closest planets out of this group, or sorry, closest passes out of this group. And you can see, if number 41 were a little closer to the planet and actually making an impact, you would actually be able to see it. Now, because this is a uh, what Orsa calls a virtual solar system, this is not uh, uh, the real solar system, and, and there's a long leaning explanation for why I had to do that. I had to set the epoch uh, appropriate for the state vectors, and the only way to do that due to a bug uh, was to create a virtual solar system. So, uh, the long and short of that is that uh, Mars is not rotating here. So, 
as you can see it's it's a static uh, image you can see that number seven appears to disappear on the back side of the planet and if it were closer and impacting it would be impacting on the far side whereas number 41 if it were closer and impacting would be impacting on the near side uh, but this does not tell you exactly which feature it would be impacting on uh, because the planet is not rotating realistically uh, it's just orbiting around the sun as if it were fixed in place but you can see that uh, there is a possibility if this thing impacts that it will do so on the uh, the side Earth can see. Now, on the other hand, if we look at Earth itself and where it is in relation to Mars at that time, go back to orthographic, and we zoom out here, let me turn on orbit so you can see. Okay, so Mars is over here, Earth is over here, and so in order to see Mars from Earth, at the time, the approximate time of impact, you kind of have to be in an awkward sort of position. Now, this is again uh, a virtual solar system, so the rotation of Earth is not uh, exactly done realistically. As you can see, it's just fixed. This doesn't tell you uh, the exact uh, location on Earth you would have to be to see it, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. The main thing to notice here is that the region facing Mars in the solar system is mostly daylit. Use the slider here to zoom out faster. Okay, so there's Mars over there, right? So if you zoom into Earth, the region facing that is mostly daylit. You kind of have to be in this little sliver of a region right here that it, it still has line of sight to Mars but is starting to get dark uh, to have your best chance of seeing it, which is not a very big area of the planet. And what we'll do now is I will export the orbital elements uh, for virtual position number 41 and number 7 and load that into uh, Stellarium and we'll take a look at where you would have to be uh, to see that passing close to Mars. All right, so here we are in Stellarium. I've now imported Monte Carlo solutions number 41 and number 7 into the program, and this will allow us to see where we would have to be on Earth's surface to properly see this event. Now, 41 and 7 were two of the closest Monte Carlo solutions to pass by Mars, but if I continue generating more Monte Car Carlo solutions, eventually some of them would actually result in impact. Uh, Mars does find itself between blue dots in the previous section, and that's a red flag that impact is possible. It's simply being undersampled in the current uh, set of Monte Carlo solutions. Uh, but if you got some that were similar to 41 and 7, but just a little bit closer, you'd be looking at actual impacts instead of just close passes. 41 and 7 passed by Mars, each at about uh, 2,000 kilometers and change apiece, and uh, as a result, uh, we can use them as sort of the outer bounds of possible impacts for Mars. Now you can see here down at the bottom the date and time, uh, October 19th, 2014. Uh, the time is in Eastern Time, so this is uh, 3.49 Eastern Time. Uh, but the question is, where would, we, where would we actually have to be in order to see this? Well, in this case, I've got the observer positioned at Cape Verde off the west coast of Africa. And it actually turns out that's about the best location you can possibly be to see this. Uh, it turns out that the prime locations are somewhere in the Atlantic off the west coast of Africa. And from Cape Verde, Mars is currently about uh, 35, almost 36 degrees high in the sky. That's uh, pretty easily observable and uh, fairly well positioned for viewing, but Mars itself is quite distant from Earth at this time, uh, 1.62 AUs, and as a result it's not actually all that big in the sky. This is a very highly magnified view, more so than you would probably see in your typical amateur telescope. Um, but you could see Mars above the horizon, even from Spain, but uh, not all that high, only about uh, 5 degrees or so. And actually, I think right now, for some strange reason, what's it doing? Oh, there we go. I don't know why it was glitching out there for a second. But, uh, okay, you can see Mars is about 5 degrees high from uh, Spain. Unfortunately, 
England and the United Kingdom in general is basically shut out. Uh, Mars is below the horizon. For us here in the States, Mars is in broad daylight. Now, if an actual impact occurs, especially if it's on the, uh, the near side of Mars, uh, it's possible you might see something if you had uh, your optics trained at the position of Mars at the time that it happened. Uh, so if you have a go-to telescope and you can get it aligned uh, while it's still dark, perhaps, wait for sunrise, wait for uh, the afternoon when uh, this event actually occurs, and have your go-to telescope positioned at Mars, even if you can't quite make it out of the blue murkiness of the day, uh, if an impact actually occurs, you might see something. It's, it's possible. Um, considering the extreme energy that we're dealing with here, we're talking uh, billions of megatons, you might actually be able to, to pick it out. Um, but the best location, again, is going to be somewhere in the Atlantic off the west coast of Africa. Now, as with any extremely rare astronomical event uh, that happens to occur best over oceans, there will almost certainly be uh, cruises to go see this event if it actually turns out that an impact is going to happen, and especially uh, if it turns out that it's going to be on the near side of Mars. Now, once again, 41, uh, Monte Carlo solution number 41 passes just in front of Mars. Uh, and if you continue generating solutions, you'd eventually get uh, impacts that were behind that, uh, somewhere around here. And number seven, a little bit later, just a few minutes later, at about uh, 402, 403, uh, passes behind Mars. And if you continue generating, generating solutions, eventually we get impacts on the far side. So unfortunately we can't narrow it down all that well at the moment. Uh, an impact is possible, it's not likely, and unfortunately we can't even really narrow down where it would occur if it does occur. It could be on either the, the far side or the near side, we just don't know. Uh, but I'll continue monitoring uh, the astrometric data on this and uh, give you updates as they come in. So with that, I hope you have a nice day.